Hi, I'm Doug from Bennett Marine. Today we're going to go over the installation of an ATP system in an existing boat. What we've got here is a 20-foot uh, pathfinder that had Lenco trim tabs originally installed on it. We're going to install the ATP right over top of the Lenco actuators and just replace the control. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. We could use this area back here for installing the control unit, but this area looks like it's going to be fairly wet and it doesn't look like we have good access to the trim tab wires, so it's gonna make our installation a little bit more difficult. So we could have put it into the front of the boat, but we're not gonna have access to the wires from the trim tabs, and it's gonna make it difficult for us to run the control cable from the display to the control unit. The front would have given us a nice dry installation, but I think we're gonna be better off underneath the helm. The next thing we're gonna do is try and place the ATP control unit. We looked at all the spots that were available and this looked like the, the best spot. We're gonna place it in there and make sure that it actually does fit. Looks like it's good, so I think we've got a good location here for our ATP control unit. We wanna be safe on any time we're working on a boat. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn off the battery switch. Next, we're going to uh, mark it with the drill. So we've got it located. Then we're gonna take it out and drill the holes. Okay, out of our control unit, we're gonna have uh, five basic wires. We're gonna have a gray communications cable, which is gonna attach to the display and made up with that. We're gonna have a black wire, which is our ground. We're gonna have an orange uh, power wire, and we're gonna have two cables that are blue and yellow for the trim tabs. The port's got a red band on it, the, green, the starboard's got a green band on it. We have our template for the ATP display that we cut out of the manual, we're gonna use this to help us gauge where we can put the display on the helm. If we put it right over top of where the old control was, you can see that it fits here. If we put it up here next to the GPS, it's gonna be tight to fit there and we're probably gonna run into issues with the screws behind the, the fiberglass here. If we put it off to the left over here, it's not as natural for the user where it's placed and we may run into some issues with wiring over here. I think our best choice is gonna be here behind the existing controls, but we need to check underneath the helm and make sure that things are clear under there so when we drill our holes, we're not gonna be drilling into anything. Take the switch panel out, and we're gonna expose the wires off of the back of the trim tab switch. It's always a good idea as a first step. Take a picture of them with your phone. By taking a picture, you've got uh, documentation on what wires went where. On a manual rocker switch like this, you're going to have power and ground on the tops and on the bottoms of both switches, and your trim tabs are going to be attached to the center posts. So this green and yellow are one trim tab, and there's a red and a blue here, and those are our other trim tab. Okay? So now we're going to go ahead and disconnect all the wires. So we'll take the power and the grounds off, off the tops. We'll take the power in the ground off the bottoms. And that's going to leave our trim tabs. I'm going to take another picture since that's just my trim tab wires exposed. Take a picture so that we've got that. And then we're going to take off the green and the yellow. That's one trim tab. And the red and the blue. That's another trim tab. On these particular switches, they're held into the panel by these little tabs. So I'm gonna press those tabs in and push them to the back and the switch just pops out. Same thing, same tabs are on the bottom. Press from the top and the bottom, pull the switches out. Put the panel back in a little bit for placement of the new switch. We're gonna place our, our template in place and we're gonna use a 3 16 drill to drill the locations for each of the holes. We're just Touch them and mark them. And in the center, we're gonna draw, drill a one inch hole. So we're gonna mark the position for that. We're gonna take this out and we're gonna drill on our marked locations. Before we do any drilling, I'm gonna check behind the control and make sure that there's nothing there. Looks like we're clear all the way around. If you have to, you can go down underneath the helm to do this. 
but now we're gonna drill the four holes out. The next step, we're gonna drill a hole for where the wires are gonna come through the helm. On an installation like this, where we've already got two holes, we could just cut this out because it's just clearance for this hole. It's not real critical as to where we put it. Out of the back of the display, there's four wires. There's a gray wire, which is our communications cable. There's an orange wire, which is our power. There's a black wire, which is our ground. And a purple wire that's going to be used to signal the ignition uh, to bring the trim tabs up. We've placed our wires through the hole that we made there. We've got four studs that are gonna go into the four holes. After we insert them, we're gonna secure them with the uh, number 832 nylon lock nuts. So we're gonna place all of the, thread all the wires back through the hole, and then insert the studs into the holes, place it, put it in place. We're gonna go underneath the helm and show you what it looks like. You'll see all the wires hanging out of the back of the display, and we've put the thumb nuts on the back of the helm dis display to secure it. And you'll see the red and blue wires and the yellow and green wires that are set aside with blue wire ties for the actuator connections. The first step in the wiring is we're going to connect up our communications cable. So we're going to take the plug from the display and connect it into the waterproof plug from the control unit. These just plug together. We're gonna talk about the wires coming off of the back of the helm display. So we have three wires like we talked about before. We've got a black wire, which is gonna get connected up to the ground system of the boat. We have an orange wire, which is gonna get connected up to 12 volts. Now this could either be connected up to 12 volts that's always turned on, or it can be connected up to 12 volts coming off of a, a auxiliary switch. When power is disconnected from this wire, the, from this orange wire, the system is going to shut down. Then we also have the purple wire. The purple wire is a sensing wire that senses power from the ignition. So we're gonna hook this wire up to the ignition system. So we've located our power panel and we see where we, the trim tabs were getting power from previously. We're gonna connect the control unit into that same location. Okay, so we've connected up the orange power wire to this 20 amp fuse where the trim tabs were originally connected. They've connected up the ground to the ground bus down here. We've got the purple wire off of the display. We need to hook this up to a wire that's switched with the ignition switch. We've used our multimeter to determine that this yellow wire right here, which comes off of our ignition switch, is switched every time the power gets turned on or the ignition switch gets turned on and off. So we're gonna butt splice this yellow wire into this purple wire. These are the two cables that are connected up to our actuators. Now what we have to do is determine which one of these was connected to the port and which one of these was connected to the starboard so that we can know which cable to hook them to on our, our control module. So on if we focus on one of them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pow apply power to them. We're gonna put positive and negative to them, and the actuator is either gonna go up or it's gonna come down. Whichever one of these two wires, when positive, connects to the actuator and makes it go down, we're gonna connect that to the blue. The other wire will go to the yellow. So we ran our test, and we found out that the blue and red wires are connected to the port actuator, and when the blue wire is positive and the red wire is negative, we get the actuator to go down. So we're gonna connect the blue and the red to our yellow and blue with the red band. The red band meant support actuator. Now, because we don't have the mating connector here, we're just gonna cut this connector off and we're gonna butt splice them together. We ran our test and found out when the yellow is positive and the green is negative, the starboard actuator goes down. So we're again going to connect the yellow and green to the starboard actuator cable that's marked on the control unit with the green. We're going to cut these connectors off and we're going to butt splice yellow to the blue because we said when the yellow was positive, it made it go down.
If your boat has standard Lenco actuators on it and the wires ran all the way to the helm, the wires are going to be white and black from the actuators. These particular ones are connected to the starboard actuator, so we're going to connect them to the starboard with the green band on them. We're going to connect the white wire to the blue wire and crimp. Connect the yellow wire to the black and crimp. Okay, so we finished our installation. We're gonna check the system now and make sure that it's working the way that we expected it to. We've turned the battery switch back on so we've got power to the system. We're gonna look at the display. We should have four yellow lights in the corners. That indicates that the system is on and it's com there's communications between the display and the relay module box. Next, we're gonna press the port bow down button and check the starboard actuator to make sure it went down. We're gonna press the starboard bow down button and make sure that the port actuator went down. After we've done that, we're gonna press the port bow up button and make sure the starboard actuator comes up. Then we're gonna press the starboard bow up button and make sure the port actuator comes up.